I'm Mark L. Vincent. I am privileged to direct the Convene Consulting Network, but today we're going to shift it a little bit and talk about the Convene Coaching Network, which is headed up by my friend and colleague Carlos Rosales, who uh, is a longtime uh, business coach and a convene chair in the Houston area. And I remember my very first meeting as a convene chair to be. Carlos was there getting his team started, and I was impressed with his pedigree and his approach and his calm as he cares for people. And so, Carlos, I'm really glad we can talk about this, and I'm really glad that you're heading up the Convene Coaching Network. Well, thank you, Mark. I'm del absolutely delighted to be here, and it's, uh, it's fun to be able to talk about something I'm very passionate about. Yeah, it's what's cool is how Convene has added some of these arms for the chairs so that they can be a little bit more well-rounded in what they can provide uh, with and for their team members when it's called on. And you've been real instrumental in helping to make that happen. So I, I'd like to just start by discussing the Convene Co Coaching Network. Uh, there are a lot of networks out there, a lot of coaching offerings out there. So why why would it be important uh, for Convene to have one in the middle of this kind of large and well-populated marketplace? Well, it's interesting you would ask that question and thank you for it. I think, Mark, the, the bottom line for us is that we wanted consistency. We wanted <laughs> quality. We wanted coaches that were prepared to really deliver maximum value to the, uh, the convened members and, and others. And so by forming this network, we're asking them to do several things. One is to get certification in one of the uh, International Coaching Federation uh, programs so that they can walk away and say, I've been certified, I've had the necessary training, and that's a requirement. And, and so that really brings some consistency to the quality of the training. And then also, uh, because we're convened, it's a, it's a faith-based organization, we integrate our spiritual walk into that. And, um, and it really can be a, a, a real, what I like to call a secret weapon so not only are you coaching from a strong business perspective, but you have the Holy Spirit guiding you. So I know that you've been at the decision point for a lot of CEOs and owners when they say, okay, I want my team to be coached or I'm going to have uh, someone coach me uh, special, not just like an ongoing one-to-one -one each month when we're working on the business, but I've got this hurdle to overcome, this blockage right. I want to get past. Um, so if a CEO or an owner is really looking at this, uh, what are the things that you see that kind of show up from uh, repeatedly, let's say, where they're saying, okay, we're going to do this. We're, we're, we, we need it. Uh, we've got to have this. Uh, what, what brings that about? Well, for me, I, I consider myself, and this is what I kind of title myself when I'm talking to the people in the organization. I'm the chair, excuse me, chief uh, culture officer, chief culture officer. So I should begin to examine the culture immediately and what's, what needs to be developed. Is it broken? Is it fixed? Did they ever have one? And I think that's really where I start. And I really uh, believe that's important. Now, if I'm working specifically with just the, uh, the CEO, the owner, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that and then see how that can actually be taken down a level. But um, oftentimes we, uh, a business will start, they'll get running down the track and they lose sight of the culture that they started, it got them in the business, or they never really fully in, uh, establish one. So as a result, everybody's just kind of running out there and nobody understands why are we here? And so that's really part of where I start with. And of course we deal with a lot of leadership concepts. Um, what, what, what makes a great leader? And really the, the, the difference, I think, Mark, in, in what we do, and you know, you can go to leadership seminars, you can go to read a book, but it's that month in, month out, month in, month out, working with an individual to bring them along a path. You know, what we call the gap analysis, right? Here's where they are and here's where we want them to go. We're gonna help them get there. We're gonna take some side roads from time to time. There may be personal issues that come up but for the most part, we're focused on a, on a, on a direction. Okay. And because you've been doing this for a while, I'd, I'd like to 
ask you a two-parter here. The first part is the demands increasing for this kind of service in all kinds of sectors. So why is that? And then the second part, what's the long-term benefit that you're seeing when people actually make use of coaching service? Well, the, I think the demand is because, Mark, people are A, because of the current environment we find ourselves with the, the pandemic, excuse me, is that people are not able to travel, they're not able to go to workshops. Uh, there's also feeling very isolated. And whether uh, it be they can't come to the office or they can't associate with other people, but there's also a recognition, Mark, that you can't uh, any longer just run your business by the seat of your pants. It develops skills. And what I have found, and this is an interesting thing, Mark, and I'm sure you've experienced it, is the most successful companies are the ones that do the best in coaching. Hmm. The guy that has one foot in the grave, so to speak, or knows all the answers are typically not the person that's going to do well. So I would, I would, I would dare say that most of my clients that I work with on a one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship are already very successful, but they recognize they can't do it alone. And that's really, I think, what's causing this is that the CEO recognizes, hey, if I need help, maybe my leadership team needs help hmm. as well. Hmm. So they stop treating it as a perk. In other words, it becomes exactly. a part of their strategy and and uh, their executive leadership development scaffolding for others. Absolutely. In fact, uh, what I'm learning is that more and more big corporations will have in-house coaches to help their 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 personnel. And so that's how I look at my role is I'm an in-house business coach hmm. for the individual leaders. Okay. Um. Now I have a hunch here. I have a hunch that this okay. book that you published last year ties to coaching experiences in some way. So I want to ask you about that. You, you published this book, 10X for Christ. It's gotten great reviews. Anybody I know that spent time with it is saying this has been helpful. They enjoyed it. They, they found it to be very beneficial. So how did that come about? And how does that, how did it be become an outgrowth uh, or connect in any way to what you do in coaching? Well, to me, Mark, and this is fundamental to my faith, is that without a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't be effective in anything we do, whether it be in business or in coaching. So this is kind of a, a way to help people grow in their relationship with Christ. Uh, and so that's how I see the correlation between what I do in coaching and, and their walk with, with Christ. So it's, it's very much uh, on a parallel path, if you will where I don't necessarily in my coaching talk about spiritual things or, or have Bible studies or devotionals, but that devotional can come along and uh, really help transform people's lives. And I've, I've heard that from people that, that benefit from that and have been blessed by it. But at the same time, it's helping them understand more than anything else, Mark, that apart from Jesus Christ in our lives, it's impossible to do anything of worth and, and worthy uh, over time without that relationship. So it's kind of a, a backup, if you will. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that in the discussion guide that accompanies this, that we link to that and people can find out more. And uh, in addition to any other going deeper resources that we might include, um, I'd like to ask you a, a final question here, Carlos, uh, because this is a newer network from Convene, a newer offering. If this coaching network is to succeed and we're a few years into it and we're saying, wow, this has really been an amazing ride, what would have happened in, in your view? Well, I think that uh, two things. One is that every one of the Convene coaches has full certification. So we have a comfort level and a, and a degree or an assurance that they're competent in delivering a product. And so we have monthly calls of helping develop that, deal with, with challenges and that sort of thing. But the, really the certification is where it is. And then secondly, um, we would have everyone that's a convened chair as a certified coach and have that flexibility to offer it to their clients. And, and I think once they start to see the connection between being a convened chair and being an internal coach for the same organization, it's hugely beneficial because, you know, being a convened chair, having come from that, that, that arena, 
is that I'm working with a CEO, he's working with his people, what better person to come in and coach his staff than someone, A, that's spiritually aligned, understands their business values, understands their goals. So I basically become a, a representative, if you will, of the leadership. Hmm. So there's two things I want to check in on, make sure I've understood them, um, okay. kind of anchor some of these insights. One of them is that coaching is being seen and experienced, like there's data that backs it up as a, an important and integral act within an organization. It, ha it helps with business performance and leadership performance. It's not just a nice to have little extra luxury. And then the second one is what you were just describing here, that it by working with a convene chair, if you're a convene member or working with um, a convene chair or a convene coach, when you're tied into this kind of an ecosystem, it creates continuity. You're not starting over. You're able to drive a dynamic further and deeper uh, and with greater intensity. Am, am I understanding uh, this correctly? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what, what really begins to happen first, Mark, in this is that we're not looking so much as performance issues in terms of profitability. What we look at is, again, going back to the culture, is the team working in harmony? Harvard study shows that 30% of our company employees are active and engaged, but the other 70% sometimes are going against the grain. Mm -hmm. Imagine that we get more of these individuals at that 70% rowing in the same direction, so to speak. So, I see the most profound changes in an organization that ultimately leads to increased profitability, increased productivity, but it's in transforming the individuals and getting sure. them to work as a team. Yeah. Well, Carlos, thank you very much for joining me for this brief conversation. And for all of you listening, we do hope you will take advantage of the offerings of the Convene Coaching Network. There will be a link here. You can chase it down and learn more. And I know Carlos will be very happy to talk with you if you want to know more. So again, I want to thank you all for listening and wish you Godspeed as you do your work. Farewell. Thank you, Mark.